As modern manufacturing processes have developed, 3D printing has emerged as an easy and effective way to create custom parts for both hobbyists and professionals alike. In typical 3D printing, a meltable thermoplastic is extruded and deposited layer by layer to form any manner of complex structure. Thermoplastics are chosen for their ease of use, however for certain applications they can be lacking in strength and high temperature resistance. To increase strength, some printers have been developed to inlay composite fibers into the layers of a print. Additionally, to develop temperature resistance, the thermoplastic binding agent can be replaced with a thermoset resin. Although, this combination is not often seen due to the difficulty of its implementation. One application where this material combination can be useful is in medical fixture devices. This style of composite 3D printing allows for strong, lightweight medical fixtures that are capable of oven sterilization. That is why our senior design team was commissioned by our sponsor, Acepin LLC, to design and prototype a material delivery system that is capable of creating continuous fiber thermoset parts. Design of the material delivery system can be broken down into five major technical challenges. Fiber resin infusion, material extrusion, fiber cutting, resin curing, and resin cleaning, each of which provide their own unique difficulties. Tackling resin infusion requires a design that is capable of thoroughly mixing the viscous resin into the fiber bundle cross-section. In development of this design, prototype testing was done on a variety of generated concepts which included ultrasonic resin infusion and a mix of horizontal and vertical fiber roller setups. Through testing, the simplest and most effective choice was the use of a horizontal resin roller bath with outlet nozzles to remove excess resin from the fiber. Material extrusion provides some difficulty in that the fibers that need to be manipulated lack stiffness and must be primarily pulled rather than pushed like conventional printers. Similar to infusion, extrusion was developed through iterations of designs that mimicked common 3D printer extruders. The most effective design in this case proved to be a two-powered roller setup with high temperature o-rings that provided grip and guidance for the rollers. The addition of more nozzles on either end of these rollers then allowed for better fiber stability when printing in any direction. Fiber cutting is required due to the need for discontinuous extrusion that may be required for some part geometries, which would be inhibited by a continuous fiber strand. Therefore, it is necessary to create a fiber cutting mechanism that is capable of cutting carbon fiber, fiberglass, and Kevlar fibers. In testing of some single blade, double blade, and rotary blade designs, it became apparent that the difference in fiber strength and material properties would make it difficult to create a universal mechanism to cut all fiber types. Luckily, a diode laser proved to be capable of cutting all three fibers, which would still allow for a universal cutting mechanism. As the thermoset resin to be used in this printer is one made for high temperatures, it must also be cured at a high temperature. The printer must then accommodate this through a specialized heating system. With the testing of radiation ceramic heaters and oven curing methods, it was discovered that a more passive method of heating such as these would be insufficient for practical curing times with a 3D printer. Instead, a forced convection heat gun was much more effective in decreasing cure time. Finally, any part that encountered the resin during a print would need to be cleaned to prevent cured resin buildup over time. Since acetone proved to be effective in dissolving uncured resin, the team decided that cleaning would only require the quick removal of parts for acetone bath cleaning or the replacement of cheap disposable components. With the basic plans for the printer completed, it was then time to develop the practical implementation of these designs. Doing this would require calculations and analysis for the many different intricacies of the printer design, all of which would involve individual component specification research, material property analysis, initial hand calculations of stress and heat transfer values, CAD modeling of individual systems, computational analysis of systems, spatial analysis of the entire assembly, component purchasing, verification of component functions, and, well, let's be real, you don't really care about that. You just want to see a printer being made.
Thanks for watching.